Very good afternoon everyone. My name is Raja Muhammad Fihrat bin Raja Azidan, currently the record holder for the longest name in Liverpool John Moss University. <laughs> so today I would like to share with you some of my studies here done at Liverpool John Moss as part of my PhDs. Um, as you know, soccer is a very popular sport played by millions of people worldwide and unfortunately it has also attributed to uh, lower limb injuries. And the type of injuries in particular, which been, will be the main focus of my presentation today, is related to with the non-contact ACL anterior crochet, anterior crochet ligament injuries. So, if some of you have not sure where is the ACL, it's actually it's joint is uh, at your knees. These ACL injuries are likely to contribute also to a negative health issues related with an early onset of osteoarthritis, um, a damage to the meniscus and chondral, as well as functional instability, which relate also with physical inactivity. There's a lot of factors can contribute to ACL injuries, and most studies have deficient these factors into an external and also internal risk factors. So external is, is for example, is related with the environment, the surface, or the type of footwear, whereas the internals are related with the anatomical, hormonal, genetic, as well as the biomechanical and neuromuscular. Within the internal risk factor, the biomechanical and neuromuscular can be modified. You know? Sometimes I wish the anatomical can be modified too, because I can get be become a little bit taller than always. And this Biomechanical neuromuscular would be the main focus of my studies. For biomechanical risk factors, most injuries are likely to occur during improper mechanics, such as landing, jumping, or changing of direction, such as performing the side cutting task. These movements are likely to induce greater changes in the peak knee abduction moment, as well as and more extended knee extension and hip angles, which are likely to contribute to ACL injury. In addition, muscle strength imbalance has also has been shown to be an important factor in contributing to ACL injuries. These muscle strength imbalance are most likely related with the hamstring eccentric strength and the function HQ ratios, which I will present later in my presentation. Well, while most Injuries in soccer are likely to happen during the later stages of the match play. So therefore, it has been speculated that a high level of exertions during match plays also contribute to a significant changes in the biomechanical and muscular strength related risk factors, which will further increase the risk of injuries. Therefore, the overall aim, the overall aim of this research is firstly, to investigate the effect of exertions induced by soccer match play on the biomechanical and muscular strength related markers of ACL injuries. Secondly, to identify the needs and also potential of uh, injury prevention programs. In the first study, we look at the effect of a treadmill versus an overground match simulations on the biomechanical risk factor. This study has been published recently in the Journal of Sports Science. Well, most studies have looked at the effect of match simulations on markers of injuries, either using a treadmill match simulations or an overground match simulation. However, none of these studies have directly compared between most, uh, both simulations. So therefore, the objective of this study is to compare the effect of a treadmill versus an overground match simulation on the biomechanical risk factors of ACL injury. We have recruited 20 recreationally trained soccer players in these studies. All participants are required to perform a family lesson sessions. And in a repeated measure design, participants are randomly assigned to perform an overground or a treadmill simulation with the side cutting task. We analyzed the data using a three times, two times three repeated measures ANOVA. During testing, Participants are required to perform a standardized soccer-specific warm-ups 
we followed by a 10 minutes of passive rest. And then participants are required to perform a full 45 minutes match simulation and followed by a another 15 minutes of passive rest. This kind of study design are likely to be similar to what been observed during the first 45 minutes of a match play. The overground match simulations were adopted by a study by Katie Small and Lovell, which we modified to be from 20 meter to 15 meters. And the overground simulations has been um, designed to include a high multi-directional and utility movement with a high acceleration and decelerations. In addition, the treadmill simulations has been programmed to induce similar activity profile, however, only a straight line running with no change of directions and also a lesser um, acceleration or set. This is a 15 minute activity profiles in both simulations. Participants are required to, to perform these activity profiles such as walking, jogging, striding, sprinting at selected times in a random um, intermittent manner. During testing, participants are required to perform a side cutting assessment before the match simulation, immediately after the simulation, and then 15 minutes after the passive rest. Heart rate and RP were recorded during this test. And if you are unsure of what is the rate of passive assertion, it's, it's actually it's a very good tool for you to um, determine the kind of assertions that you expose. Some of you are not in the sports science background. Um, now, sometimes I use this to my wife, you know, sometimes when she got angry, I say, what's your RP? If she say 10, means okay, means she's not angry. If she say 18, I need to get her shopping. She say, if she said 20, I might have to find a new wife then. <laughs> well, we use the LRT model, the lower limb trunk model, with a 44 reflective markers and a 60 degree of freedoms, which include a segment model, include the upper and, and lower limb, trunk, pelvis, and the foot. The side cutting maneuver, we use a sudden anticipated side cutting task, which approach between four to five, and we only test the dominant leg. And the task would be more valid if the participant, oops. Sorry. Thus is valid is the participant foot land entirely on the force plate and they did a 45 degrees turn. We use 10 infrared cameras set at 250 hertz with the force plate set at 1500 hertz and we use a frontal plane peak knee abduction moments during the weight F-set phase as it has been shown that during this phase are likely most ACL injuries are likely to occur. At the same time, the second plane knee angles has been measured during the initial contact. So based on the physiological parameters, we found that the mean heart rate and RP for the overground match simulations are similar to what been observed during a soccer match and also similar to the previous overground and treadmill match simulations. In addition, the heart rate and RP of the overground are more higher compared to the treadmill simulations. So the inclusion of acceleration, deceleration plus multi-direction movement are likely to induce these kind of changes. We did not find any significant changes on the biomechanical markers after 45 minutes of match simulations. However, interestingly, we found the knee is more extended flowing half-time interval, which indicate that the participants are likely to have an increase of injury risk during the early stages of the second half. In study two, we look at the effect of treadmill versus an overground match simulation on muscle strength related markers. But similarly, we use a treadmill versus overground and the objective of these studies is to compare and the effect of treadmill versus an overground match simulations on the, bio, on, on the muscle strength related markers. 
We recruit 15 recreation trained male soccer players in the studies. All players are familiarized with their test procedures. And in the repeated measure design, they were randomly assigned to perform an overground or a treadmill mat simulation with a, a muscle strength test. And we test, we analyze the data using uh, an appropriate statistical measures. During testing, muscle strength assessment being conducted before mat simulation, immediately after 45 minutes of mat simulation, and also after 15 minutes of passive flash. The heart rate and RP is recorded at selected time during the mat simulations. We use the isokinetic dynamometer to test muscular strength. The conventional and the functional HQ ratio has been selected and with 120 degrees per second speed. We only test the dominant leg for this study. The key findings indicate that the hamstring concentric and hamstring eccentric are likely to be more affected. Especially, the hamstring eccentric has been more affected in the overground simulation compared to the treadmill simulation. In addition, the functional HQ ratios are more affected compared to the conventional HQ ratio, which indicate that the functional HQ ratios are likely to be more representative of the changes induced during a soccer match play. No significant difference has been shown in the angle of pick talk in all muscle actions. This funding suggests that muscular reduce in hamstring eccentric strength and reduce in muscular imbalance are likely to contribute the injury, ACL injuries during the later stage of the first half and in fact during the initial stage of the second half. Therefore, in study three, we did a similar studies which looking at the effect of treadmill and versus an overground on both biomechanical and muscular strength in females. Although these studies has not been approved by my wife, she's a little bit jealous testing the, 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 the females on batch male, but it has to be done. And we recruit 15 recruiting strain soc soccer players. Uh, we, we have recruited 15 healthy females to participate in these studies. Similarly, participants are required to perform a feminization sessions and we randomly assign them to perform either an overground or the technical simulation or with a side cutting and a strength assessment which the participant has to come to the lab for three additional time and we analyze the data using two times three and our repeated measures. We use similar overground and treatment match simulations. However, based on studies that indicate that females are likely to cover less distance, which is 5 to 10 percent compared to males, we have reduced the distance from 15 meters to 13 meters. We measure side cutting and muscle strength at similar times. And the key findings indicate that there's no significant difference or changes in knee mechanics in females after 45 minutes and after 15 minutes of passive rest. In addition, the concentric, uh, the hamstring eccentric and function HQ ratios are likely to be more affected in both simulations. No significant difference has been observed in the angle of pick talk. Again, what did we learn so far?